in the know. I'm your host, Joy Baird. This program is presented to you by the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and by Canning What You Grow A series hosted by Holly Baird. You can find on this very YouTube channel, West Veggie Gardeners. Each and every Friday, Holly takes us in her canning kitchen to teach us the very basics to the advanced levels of canning so we all can can more of what we grow. I'm happy to head down to the great state of Arkansas to welcome in my guest, Wes. He is the host of Veggie Vegetate YouTube channel. And a great website, by the way. I will have that link to the website in the show notes so you all can contact him through all his social media availability there. Welcome, Wes, to the program. Thank you for having us. Well, you're not just the host of it. You've got your two young children, Zoe and Aiden, who help you in the garden. And you've taken this YouTube channel, not so much as a gardening channel, but as a learning and a fun channel for the kids as well. Correct. Yes, we. I try to focus on my kids because they like to be outdoors. They don't like to be. Um, uh, they like to be in the pool during the summer, and I encourage that because when I was a kid, that's the way I was raised was to be outside and using your imagination and doing things. And so I try to put my kids outside and you know let them get a little sun on them and learn something at the same time. Well, let, you're, you're in your mid of your fifth year of gardening. Now, I like to find out how people got into gardening. What is your story? What five years ago did you say, hey, I think I want to start growing some of my own food? Well, when me and my wife uh, first got to mar uh, married uh, eight years ago, we moved into this house. And when we researched almost 50-something houses, out, we wanted to live out in the country. We wanted to live out, you know, out, you know like a homest, homestead kind of environment. And we wound up finding this house, and it was a unique buy. Um, it was about 500 feet from our other house, <coughs> which is kind of funny. Um, but we wound up, the, it was this, the, the couple was in their elderly couple, and they couldn't leave the house like most times when you go to buy a house. And they were in their 90s, and but this man had the greenest thumb in the world. I mean, he had grown everything. And I'm like, we... We wanted this house. It was made for us. And I said, you know, it was a, it's an older house. and we, It's a fixer-upper, but we wanted it. And when, in the deed, we said we want the garden. I said, you cannot touch anything. Don't take any fruit, vegetables, nothing. Leave it as it is. And that kind of sparked our interest. I was like, oh, in the gardening. And then, of course, that summer we were moving in, and it was hard to keep up with the garden and painting and doing all that stuff. So it kind of we got, we got a lot of stuff out of it, and we froze a lot of it and ate a lot of it. And then a couple of years we goes by and we we kind of put it down and we didn't get a chance to get back out there and work on it. So uh, my wife said, "Let's start again." I said, "Okay." And so we cleaned it up, got it going, and I've been hooked ever since. I started once you started from seed and you start your own garden. It's it's a, it comes an obsession, in my opinion, if you do it right, and you'll get hooked the rest of your life. Right. And some people get into gardening and they buy the by the starts and put it in the ground and then they forget to water or they get busy and it kind of goes by the wayside. For other gardeners like you, yourself and myself, we start it from seed, we put it in the ground, we baby that thing, we harvest it, we eat it, we love it, and, and it's life. <coughs> it, it, it's, uh, you know, the base, it's what we do uh, on a daily basis. Yep. It's, I call it like my man cave. I go outside and I sit out there, well, when it's cool, but uh, at night, I'll go out there and sit out there and just listen to the birds and the bees and the uh, just everything moving around and you just look at stuff and you're just constantly, everything's alive outside. And I just sit there for hours with a fan, of course, on me, but um, that's my getaway. I mean, it's like therapy. Very, yeah, very therapeutic. Let's talk about the uh, growing boxes. Now, they, they, I don't believe they make them anymore, but uh, John Coder from GrowingYourGreens.com sparked the interest in the YouTube community for these growings. Talk about what's uh, unique about these growings compared to other self-watering containers and the, the journey you had to go to get them. Yeah, we, um, of course, John Coder from GrowingYourGreens.com um, said, hey, come to Lowe's, get your... Uh, grow them for ten dollars and they're only forty bucks and I was like oh okay and I researched and researched and of course they're they were a clearance item or on sale and they're pretty much were gone and I had to my wife go uh, goes to uh, Tahlequah which is in Oklahoma uh, to the doctor and it's about an hour and a half drive and I, and I, we, she had a scheduled appointment she broke her leg and so I'm like oh we can time this right and fortunately for me the uh, Lowe's in Tahlequah had nine of them. Or actually, they had eight. When I got there, they actually had nine. And one of them was listed, so I was like, be even bonus. So I bought, you know, 
nine of them, and I was stoked. I gave a few, I gave a couple of them away, and I posted a little review online um, on my YouTube channel. And I wasn't really trying, you know, like I said, I wasn't really trying to do a lot with my YouTube channel at the time. I was just throw stuff up, and sure enough, within the day, the owner of Rowams, uh, I can't remember his name right now off the top of my hand, uh, contacted me through my YouTube channel and said, hey, can you give me a call? I'd like to talk to you. And I was like, oh, it's a troll. You know, some guy's just going to make fun of me or something. And I said, well, here, we'll just discuss it here on the discussion forum and everybody can learn from it because, no, I'm the president. You might want to contact me. And I was like, oh, okay. So I called him on the phone and uh, we talked for about 30 minutes. And the man's an amazing guy. He, you know, he can he can talk to anybody, and he can talk on your level, and you don't make you feel, you know, like he's a CEO. And and he he wanted to uh, use some of my content uh, on his uh, future projects or whatever, so the kids may be in some kind of project. I had to sign some waivers and stuff. But uh, in 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 lieu of the giving him my content, he wound up uh, sending me a couple growums, and I donated those to some local schools to help them get started in gardening. And the donation of the the Groms, that was not your decision. That was Zoe and Aiden's yes. decision to do so. Yes, yes. They luckily, fortunately, I work for the school district where they go to school at, and they get to uh, I get to kind of pick what school they want. And the school they're at has a gardening club. There's only two of them out of the six elementary schools. And they, you know, I said, hey, you know, what do you think about these Groms? You think you? You know, we have so many. What do you want to do with these? They go, we could give them to our school. I'm like, all right, here we go. And so he donated them, and they've used them, and they love them. And uh, a matter of fact, the uh, it sparked a lot. A matter of fact, a lot of the teachers uh, at his at our school have actually started their own home gardens. Uh, one of the matter of fact, one of their teachers actually started a little four by four raised bed just because of our videos. And that's the thing: starting small, starting a garden, just putting something in the ground. And, and I think people get. Uh, discouraged whenever they go, oh, I'm going to open up the whole backyard, and then it's too much to maintain, and then you get discouraged, and you're like, this is not for me, and I'm quitting gardening. But when you start mm -hmm. small and re understand how you can work your way up, I think it's a very uh, educational aspect for any gardener, no matter what the age. Yes, uh, and especially kids, they, they, they soak it up, and they love it, and they love getting dirty, and you can't, <laughs> you can't keep them out of the dirt. They just like to get dirty. And, and you started them off young, which is probably a lot easier than if you started them when they were 23. Exactly, yeah, they're, they're like, ah, uh, never mind. So, sorry to be young. Uh, right, so let's talk about, whenever you're on your YouTube channel, you get to meet a lot of interesting people. You got to meet Bob Watson. He was a master gardener from the River Valley. Talk about how you, uh, was you friends with him, or how did you come to about meeting Bob? Um, we have a, um, a mutual friend, which is my father-in-law, and uh, I've always wanted to get into master gardening before I even met Bob, before I even knew what master gardening was. And I've always wanted, you know, hey, I can be even better and, of course, have the nice prestigious saying master gardener. And so my father-in-law was telling me about it. I went to the little uh, lawn and garden show that we have here. Um, every city has one. <coughs> and um, learned a lot about master gardening. I signed up for the next year's classes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> got a little bit of code. Um, Anyway, so I told my father-in-law about it, and he said, well, I know. He lives right down the road from me. Would you like me to introduce you? I'm like, sure. And so that's how we got to meet. And, of course, Bob's an amazing guy, and he you know, told me all kinds of stuff. And I didn't even not learn, not know that, you know, of course, in Arkansas, we don't have a lot of lime in our soil. He said, if you live in Arkansas, put lime in your soil. You might as well, don't even think that you have enough. Put it in there. And uh, so I, that was a, one of the best tip, tips I've learned from uh, Bob. And then, of course, we're supposed to meet back again. I've got a lot of videos that I've been working on in my head, but, of course, time and, and gardening and everything else, life gets in the way. But he wants me to come out and show me off his garden and do an interview with him again and just show me off his stuff So with the kids. But, yeah, he was an amazing guy. And if, I, do, I do recommend if you're into master you know, into wanting to become a master gardener to research it and look into it. And, and, you know, Bob is an older gentleman, and most of the time with age comes wisdom as well. So yes. that, that's always a bonus to that. Yeah, Holly and I are both uh, looking into uh, this winter working on a Master Garden certificate or, or certificate, however you uh, clone or uh, term that, uh, yes. over the winter in the Milwaukee area. We feel that that would be a great advantage to what we do on a daily basis. So let's, uh, you know, on your videos, you know, many people would give a penny for your thoughts, but you took pennies and used them as at least a preventative measure for 
early blight for tomatoes. How did you come about this this trick technique? Was it as successful as you had hoped it to be? Uh, that's a good. That's a double-edged question. There. Um, <laughs> it, uh, a few years ago, or I think it was last year or this year, I mean year before last, I can't remember, we had, I had the worst case of tomato blight in the world. I can't explain to you. It was, oh my gosh, it was bad. And so I contacted our local ex county extension office, um, and just, Dustin Blakely worked there at the time, and uh, you know he said, send me some pictures of what you have. And so I did. He said, yeah, you got blight. He said, the only thing you really, stop, uh, you can't stop it once it happens is, you know, you can trim back your plants and stuff and get rid of the old stuff, but once it gets really bad into it, it's gone, just pull it and burn it. And he said, well, but you can prevent or slow it down by using copper soap. And of course, I went and bought some copper soap and, and, and read the instructions, and it's basically copper. It's just uh, shaved copper grinded into a fine mesh and soaked in water and you spray it on there. It's organic and all that good stuff. And he said, well, there's also some stuff that you can buy that's chemically based and it, and it causes, you know, Cancer and all that good stuff. All right, I researched it because cancer. I might like, not doing that. So this year, I'm to be preventative. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll you know, look into some more black. I don't want to have that again. It was I got some beautiful plants this year, and I'm gonna look it up. And I just started doing typing in blight and tomato, and sure enough, one of the websites I found has an old wives' tale about using pennies. And I was like, oh my gosh, I said, you know, this is not on YouTube. I searched for it, couldn't find it, um, and I've done it. And I've done it on about four or five of my tomato, tomato plants. The uh, the only problem I've ran into is after you, I haven't done an update video, I will soon. Uh, but when you cut the tomato plant, you very slightly put the penny into the in the stem. The only probably problem with that, eventually it falls off. And, you, and it, it, the branch just falls completely off. Now, did it stay in there long enough to get copper in it? I don't know. It, will the copper even prevent it from, you know, it's one of those questions. It's an old wives' tale that people have been using for, supposed to be using for years. I thought I'd give it a try. Um, but I do have one that I'm still working on, and I'm hoping that the, uh, there's, if it gets blind on one and the other one has the penny and they're in the same container, maybe that'll prove it, it, it's worth a validity, uh, validation, I should say. But, I don't know yet. We'll see. It's the only time we'll tell. But it's, it's you can't hurt, you know. Right, right. You can't hurt. It's it's only a penny, and everybody has their own t uh, trick and technique on how to control blight on the tomatoes, which seems to be the most uh, most the plant that gets wor the worst in the garden. Yes. <laughs> Uh, plant, plant identification challenge. You did this with uh, Aiden. Uh, you went through the gar the greenhouse and tried to uh, help. It was it was a it was a fun video, but it was an educational video for not only your children but for those who are being because plants growing at the beginning stages, the middle stages, and the and the end stages are completely different as well as the seeds that they come from. Mm -hmm. Yes, the uh, the the. The plant identification challenge came from, you know, everybody does an update video on, on YouTube, and, and they're great and all. They have their place, and, you know, you want to show off your garden to other gardeners, and everybody wants to see what everybody else is doing. And I'm like, you know, and, and I, want, I want to keep it ed educational and involve my kids, and I was like, that's my whole niche is gardening and kids, or with my kids, I should say. And I'm like, how am I going to make this interesting? So for about two days, I, I had my seven-year-old run around, and I just, pointed out where everything was, and I have a lot of tomatoes, so I was kind of shocked that he missed most of them, but anyway, so I wanted to show him off and show what each plant looks like, and some people played along, I got a lot of comments saying that they got some wrong too, so, but anyway, I digress, I showed him everything we had, and then we went back, and I said, okay, this is it, tell me if you get it right, and if you get it wrong, you will get a pie in the face. If you get it right, you get me. Uh, you get to pie me in the face, which I was happy to do either way, and it was fair. We made a bet, we shook on it, and we had a great time doing that. Was probably one of the he loved it actually. I think he liked being pied in the face more than anything. So, and and I think that's good not just for kids, but for people like you and I who are still learning. And as gardeners, we learn every day something that uh, it happens in the garden, good or bad, that we can you know, take and, and identify, identify certain good weeds, bad weeds, bad mm -hmm. bugs, and good bugs. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's good all the way around. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about reusing items. As gardeners, we always try to find the either the cheapest or the freest item. And you're using in basically industrial strength upside down tomato topsy-turvy mm -hmm. things for potato growing. Yes. Um, we, uh, I, I'm trying to get back on the topic here. We, 
I have, my wife has a, a friend of hers that he's in the, getting up in his years and he's getting out of the gardening business, a golfing business. You know, he's just kind of slowing down and he's just trying to get rid of it. So I exchanged some work for him, uh, technical work. I do technical work on the side. And he gave me a bunch of gardening stuff. I mean, all the earth boxes you see in my videos, the. Uh, uh, there's just tons of stuff. I got I've lost of tons. Of, I got like 20, um, 15 boxes of uh, mason jars from him. And everything, your whole setup, it takes you years to get. Anyway, so he gave me these revolutionary planters, and I'm like, I don't have a lot of space for these. I don't have a really a great place to hang these things. I tried to start them like you're supposed to, and I've got a little bar, a tea bar in the backyard that used to be for a clothesline. Perfect okay, perfect thing to hang them from, but there's a tree and they shade it pretty much 80% of the time. So I'm like, well, what can I do with these? Well, I guess I could just grow them in the, uh, in the in, you know, set them down. I mean, they're still hot. I mean, it's still, it, it, they sit upright. So I, I wanted not to waste them. I wanted to use them. I gave a lot of them away, too. I he gave me so many in that. So, um, but the, we planted some, we had some old potatoes laying, laying around, and I was like, oh, these would be perfect. Kids love, play, again, playing in the dirt. So they planted them, and I'm going to show my next video will be of what the results are. Um, I went out there the day. We'll see. <laughs> right, they're, our, start, they're starting our, to get Our potatoes have not been that great in the ground, and, and I assume that yours would probably be more successful in a container with good organic uh, compost in it with the, those potatoes. Mm -hmm. they're, and they're big big uh, topsy-turvy industrial strength containers. Oh, yeah. They're not they're not tiny at all. No, they're they're probably about two foot tall and they're about uh, I want to say ten inches across. But we'll see. I, I've never had success with potatoes ever. I've been, I've been doing this for five years. I've never had real success. Now we went to my father-in-law's house. We'll have a video on that. A uh, couple said a kid and we planted potatoes and we actually have probably a 20 pound bag of potatoes that we got from that so okay. so so he, we've had better success other places but on our property potatoes just don't like us now let's talk about composting you've got three different devices that you compost with uh, some mm -hmm. expensive some uh, relatively cheap and some free what has you have you found to be the most successful way of composting or which way do you like to compost in, in your mind The, to be honest with you, the best, uh, the best out of all the three in my uh, over the years is open air, stack up just a three foot by three foot section. Uh, those the the topsy or the topsy turvy, not that so big. The composting uh, crank thing, um, it gets heavy, and you start filling that thing up. I can bear, I'm a I'm a you know 225 pound man, and I can barely turn that thing. But over time, it slowly breaks down and it goes get a little bit lighter. But man, you're just cranking that thing; and it's rough. Um, and it, it takes seems like it takes longer. Uh, but if you just throw them out, I got, I got a little place over on my, my property where I've just got some old uh, uh, pallet pallets, and just stick them on there and stick them in a, in a corner. Throw your stuff on there and just turn it every once in a while. Worms get to it, you know. Moisture gets to it and stuff like that, and it just seems to work way better. And, and you know, with that, and we've got a, a trash can that we use just because it's you know condensed, and it may not be the most effective way, but it works for us. And and sometimes that's you know you may not have to play by the book if it works mm -hmm. well for you, just do it. Right. Well, then, again, I would never use the composter tumbler. That's what it is, compost tumbler. And but that old man course gave it to me part of the bargain I really didn't really need it but um, I, I'm trying it out and then that's what I'm kind of finding it does make great compost so I've checked it out it's 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 great looking stuff and I'm going to use it uh, this fall when I start my fall crop um, and it's already produced from February to I think about June I think it was four months I was ready to use it but I'm you know I'm going to wait, wait a little longer uh, but again the open air if you're a gardener uh, open air just pile on the ground that nature take its course works so much better Right. And, it's, and it's free. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, your greenhouse, it's a 10 foot wide by 20 foot long greenhouse. Your, your biggest expense was the flooring. Uh, yes. But you do, you, you found some great free items that kind of really built the foundation for that. Yes. Um, I, when I bought the greenhouse, um, I did some, a lot of research trying to find the you know, prices and you know, things like that. Um, I probably should have checked my zoning laws before I put it up. It, it, luckily, I didn't have any problems with that. Um, um, but when I bought it, it was uh, I wanted to make it something I could just hang out in, like a place for like a man cave. Uh, or, or not, I didn't want to have to worry about tilling the ground up. That's a lot of work. I'm just going to have a lot of containers 
that would be my container garden. And so I found uh, I needed pallets. I was going to build a frame, for, first of all, with two by fours, and I was like, man, it's going to be expensive. And then somebody once said, well, once you go find some pallets, you can just lay them down, and, and they'll be you know good to go. Sure enough, I uh, found about 23 free pallets. So that saved a lot of money right there. And, and you can still buy them. I think they're like five, ten bucks. But I was finding the place they were just getting rid of them. So, um, and with the flooring, it was a little sh a sticker shock myself. I mean, uh, eight by eight by four sheets are you know fifteen, twenty dollars, and you got to buy seven of them. You know that adds up real quickly. So the garden, the greenhouse total cost me, um, we'll say about four hundred dollars total uh, all together, said and done. Uh, now, if I had to do it over again, I probably would have built something smaller um, because it is a lot of work just to keep up with that. You have to cool it uh, during the summertime. You have to heat it during the wintertime, and it, it, it's, it's very expensive. Um, you got to find some kind of a cheap alternative, um, and it was a lot to take in. But now that I'm used to it, I, I, but if you're going to start out with a greenhouse first, start by like an 8 by 6 or you know 8 by 10 or something like that. Don't go 20 feet because it is a lot of work at first, and you get overwhelmed. Now with the, the keeping it warm in the winter, so you're growing some items in the winter in Arkansas. Obviously, it's cool. It, it's not as cold in Arkansas as it is in, in Wisconsin during no, the winter. No. Uh, so you basically, what are you growing? Greens or uh, what kind uh, of items? Well, my, my theory is this year I'm hoping to grow. You have tomatoes, through, you know, year round. If they, if uh, any term it, tomatoes can grow year round, you know, this will be the year to do it. I'm gonna. Uh, we do have some pretty, you know, hard winters, but we don't get down to the minus, you know, right. negatives. Uh, we get down maybe the twenties. And of course, then you can pump a little extra heat in there, and it keeps them alive. Um, but then, when the sun comes out, you know it's free energy and it keeps them warm. So I'm hoping just to continue growing as I as I am now with what I got. You know, I got some uh, Swiss chard. I love Swiss chard. Um, I've got some uh, spinach growing in there. I've got some, a lot of tomatoes. I got my Carolina Reapers and my hot peppers. Um, mainly tomatoes, but I'm hoping to keep those growing just 365. You know, prune them back and then keep going. And we can we can have fresh vegetables year round, right? Kind of like the MHP gardener over in I believe it's Virginia. Yeah, uh, and, you know he's got a f fantastic setup, and if we can just learn a little bit from what he's doing, yep. we can all be better gardeners. Yeah, I love that man. Uh, <laughs> very very knowledgeable. So let's let's uh, close out with you did a recent video. Many of us fight the uh, squash or vine moth or beetle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it destroyed a lot of your squash, but you turned it into a fun educational uh, experience for for Zoe and Aiden. In in that sense, talk about what you did on that. And did you was you able to save any of the squash? By the way, no. Um, Every year I get them, and I've seen the uh, the squash vine boar moth, if you will. It's like a wasp, and it's a, it's psychedelically freaky, and you want to kill it, but you're kind of like, ooh, I just can't do it, you know, because it's like it's going to hurt you. Um, and they're fast and they're quick. Um, but no, I've seen them flying around. I I, I put down some uh, diaper dust, which is an organic uh, kills caterpillars, hoping that maybe when they put the egg on there, it started to come come alive and it, it would kill it before it got into the plant unfortunately it didn't stop it uh, I, I've tried the full method where you put full around it but they figured out oh I could put my eggs up on the top of the branches and then they'll work their way down in the, into the in the vine itself so you know that's that's part of the only way really stopping it would be the netting thing but what um, so but I've already replanted for next year or for the fall so hopefully in the south they suppose they have two uh, broods they come out. So I'm hoping maybe I can get through the summer and they won't come out in the fall. But let me get back on subject here. Anyway, so I noticed my plants were getting kind of weaker and they had all these beautiful, you know, uh, squash coming on. I'm like, oh, they're looking so good, but they're starting to kind of, eh. I'm like, is it, is it that again? And so I sure enough, I looked. And once you see the damage, it's just too late. So I was pulling them out. I was going to squash all the, all the, uh, the, the larvae and, and just recycle the rest of it because there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I could recompost it. And then I'm like, oh, this thing's move, man. I put it on the board to collect and see how many I had. And these things can get up and go. And I was like, oh, this would be awesome. Said, and it just sparked my uh, one, of those, one of those instantaneous videos. I'm like, ran inside the house, grabbed the kids, said, come out here and check this out. And that's how we come up with that video. And they loved it. Matter of fact, Zoe actually was kind of like upset that we killed them all. She's like, she wanted to keep them. And I was like, no. <laughs> no, no, not the pet, not the pet to have in, in a garden. Mm, no. But, yeah, well, they enjoyed it. They loved that one. Well, Wes, I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to come on the program and to share some of your garden knowledge with us. Yeah, anytime. I appreciate it. Thank you. And for uh, me. we'll 
Yeah, we'll have your website, Vegetate, in the show notes for everybody to jump over. It, it, by the way, very, very nice website. A lot of information, very well organized and easy to get to. Thank you. So until next time, if you like what you see, hit that like button at the bottom of the page. For Wes from Vegetate.com, I'm Joy Baird from WisconsinVegetableGardener.com reminding you, till next time, stay in the know so you're always prepared. See you next time, everybody.